That's the problem. We're, we're constantly talking, man, we got to come together. We got to come. How about you just do your part? Mm. I do my part. But I can't do my part. I'm black. Would you say the black community is thirsty for acceptance and inclusion from the white community? I can speak for my generation, we don't care. My business, we work with black people. I don't care about white opinion. But shouldn't we all be equal though? Is your Bible made of equal people? That's not okay for me to go somewhere and some white woman be treated better than me because I'm black. You said, how do we fight white privilege? How do we fight racism? Is by create something within the black community mm -hmm. that generates wealth. Mm -hmm. I would love to just stay right there because y'all know me, I'm the money guy. I do a lot of research. And when it comes to finances and creating generational wealth for the African-American community, I have to be honest and transparent. I get frustrated with us mm -hmm. because we go back and we blame the last 400 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we blame white privilege and we blame everyone else rather than just saying, hey, I'm going to take advantage of where I am. I'm going to bust my butt and I'm going to sit here and think about, okay, what is my granddaughter LaDonna going to be doing five generations from now with this company that creates millions, not for my son, but my son's son, my son's son, and my son's daughter, and my daughter, da 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 But we, we complain. So like, how do we create and get over the past and focus about today and change tomorrow? That's so good. I'm screaming on the inside right now. Y'all were uh, like making a joke when LaDonna was coming in that she walks in in slow motion. Yeah, she does. That's yeah. how you pulled it. When <laughs> LaDonna comes in a room, everybody says, who is that? Mm -hmm. And she comes with, she comes with a presence. Yeah. She has this invisible entourage around her, right? She does. And when you said that, about she's always been free. Mm -hmm. She may not, you know, see it that way, but because I truly do believe that entrepreneurship is freedom. It, it's the only way to ultimately, you know, live free and to not be into debt to other people. Mm -hmm. But I thought about my grandbabies. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. going to be Lincoln and Zoe one day. Mm -hmm. I just saw them. They go walk in slow motion <laughs> when they come in. Like, you know, you just personified that for me. Yeah. You changed the narrative. Yeah, like that's what I've been working for. Mm. And I never knew what that was going to look like, but I did say I wanted to be great because I wanted for my granddaughters to walk into a room and for them to say, my grandmother was Mignon Francois, and I want that to matter mm -hmm. for something. Mm -hmm. And for her, that matters. Mm -hmm. She's walking in it. She's walking She's in it. She's living it. All she has to do is walk in and say, you know, her last name, and then you start telling her story. Yeah. She doesn't have to say anything. Mm. And I love that. Mm. But the way that the way that we answer the question, my sisters and I laid our grandmother to rest last year. When we when we left her funeral, we went to Terrio, Louisiana. Okay. And that's my maiden name. And so Terrio was one of the largest plantations in Louisiana. And so we asked Siri to take us to Terrio. And it landed us in the middle of an operating sugarcane field. Mm. And standing there with my sisters, I was in awe mm. of the landscape thinking about the past. Mm -hmm. I thought about the women who walked that ground before me. I sauntered onto this plantation. You better not tell me nothing <laughs> about being here. This isn't my land, but it's got my name on it. Ooh. And so I'm going to be here. And if I was, we were off onto these people's property. Yeah. And we walked in there with our level of privilege. Yeah. Yeah. And as we stood there, this four-way stop sign, it dawned on me that I had to be great and I had to do my due diligence to make my name great because the women who came before me, whose names you will never know, 
who were excellent in all that they did. They had to be excellent in all that they did. You will never know their name, but you will experience them because you will experience Mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And I will be great. And you will say my name. Mm -hmm. And you will say my name and it will be attached to good business. And it will be attached to generational wealth and legacy because I'm going to make certain that it happens. And so what I've been doing with my business and my time, I I took my business back to New Orleans, where I'm from. I had this idea that I wanted to redeem the time that was stolen from them. And so I wanted to plant my business in places where we had been historically enslaved Mm. and create enterprise Mm. and go back and get the money that they couldn't get. Mm. And so we had to go back to New Orleans, where we're from and where the hub of slave trade was. And I had to teach it to my sisters. And then they're going to teach it. And then those children are going to teach it. And we're grooming the next generation right now. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that's how you do it. You don't make excuses. You don't say, I I think about Barack Obama and how he said he had to do his homework in those kind of wee hours because that's when his mother was available. And I think if we stop making excuses for our children or why we can't do things, we will have a great, a greater generation with a greater opportunity. And I just think the way that you do it is you do it hard. If it's hard, you do it hard. And I just think that you you don't get to complain. Just like you were saying, you you don't get to complain. And no excuses. Yeah, you don't get to complain, no excuses. It's, we got to take ownership. And and when you say how Mm -hmm. do we do it, it it doesn't have to be, you know, we got to come together. That's the problem. We're we're constantly talking, man, we got to come together. We got to come. How about you just do your part? Mm. I do my part. But I can't do my part, I'm black. Well, that's the, that's, that's the problem right there. You, you, you think, you know, in terms of, people think in terms of, you know, black as a stigmatism. Yeah. St- stigmatism. Yeah. And it's not. They have a 400-year head start. What are you talking about? I, I ain't can't. trying to catch up. I'm just trying to do my part. Mm. See, 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 we all have a leg to run. Mm. 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 We all have a leg to run. Mm. It's a relay race. Right. Before you, somebody else was before you, mm-hmm. your mom and dad. Mm-hmm. They came along, they are running their race and they passed the baton to you for you to run yours. She talked about her legacy. They ran their race and they're passing on. Now she's just running a better leg to prepare for the next, mm-hmm. that five-year-old or whoever, mm-hmm. to, to run the next. We, we cannot be caught up on what anybody else if we just do our part. Yeah. Just out. You're changing the legacy of your of 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 your of the O'Neill family. Right, right, right. Am I right? Right. By what you did. Right. But all you did was your part. Yeah. When your leg is done, God's gonna call you home. Ain't no more running to do. Yeah. Yeah. Run to the best of your ability and stop worrying about who else on the track. Mm. Yeah. Run to the best of your ability. Ladonna, you you mm-hmm. the baton is in your hand of a multi-million dollar budget a year company. Oh. I want you to talk into that. How do you feel? Because aren't you the first woman in the chair of your family? Yes. And young. You're in your young 30s. Um, Let's let's talk about that. Because I got to ask you this question straight up. Did what they say, did the white culture, the white man, um, prevent you and your family from succeeding? There were some road bumps for sure. You know, certainly. But, um, you know, it's interesting just to think about what you're saying, passing the baton. And that, when you were saying that, I was thinking it's when your part of the race is done, but it's up to you to leave nuggets of wisdom along the way. Yeah. So, you know, there's no way I could be where I am right now without the wisdom of my father and then yeah. grandfather. Mm-hmm. So my great-great-grandfather founded our company in 1896. So okay. 125 years later, Whew. we're still in existence. And the sole purpose is because he wanted to provide an opportunity for newly freed Black people to have their voice heard wow. in the context of religion. So, yeah. you know, they wanted to get away from the religion of the, the white man, if you will, and the oppression that comes with that, but still be able to freely express themselves in the context of Christianity. So, in the way that he wanted to do that was in the written word. Obviously, in the 1800s and previously, it was literally illegal for black people mm-hmm. to be literate. Mm-hmm. Um, so, to, to 
to go from being born in Mississippi in 1843, being enslaved, and then in 1896, buying a press to literally distribute the written word amongst freely you know, newly freed black people is something that is, is quite impressive. You know, there were threats on his life, and you know, obviously, like, nobody wanted him to succeed that was on the outside, but he was able to succeed with the support of his peers mm. in the church. So interestingly enough, you know, he couldn't just go somewhere and buy a press. He had to rely on a white counterpart to help that transaction. And he also relied on his wife to provide some resources as well. So she actually sewed into his dream to be able to establish the company. Ooh. Now, just to, and I know, Anthony, it's on you, but I just want to say what you just said was so powerful because while he has this macro scopic, your, your great-grandfather, mm -hmm. microscopic view of racism in his day, which would be totally different than we, what we would even begin to ex right. say we can experience. He also has a view of white people totally different yes. than most. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, that, and that's the God narrative. That's the part that, as a believer, you should not be experiencing racism like everybody else because you're not up under that same umbrella. Wow. You should not be. Yeah, yeah. The favor of God should be on your life. I don't get scared when a cop pulls me over. Mm. He has to answer to the same God that I have to answer to. Mm. And even if he has bad intentions, I know the person who controls his heart. Mm. <laughs> so why am I going to fear him? Mm. Does that make sense? Not that, not that, that there isn't cops who do bad things. Right. But I've made it this long. You asked me about a gun. I've made it this long mm -hmm. without a gun mm -hmm. because I know who controls the heart of man. Mm -hmm. And I'm not being super spiritual. Mm -hmm. I'm simply saying that I haven't experienced fear like the person who, every time a cop pulls them over, is shaking in their boots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rewind time 15 years ago, were, 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 were cops killing blacks? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But do, were you afraid to get pulled over? No. Mm. What's the difference, TV? Mm. <laughs> What's the difference? Media. Now you've been given a fear. Mm. You've been handed a fear. Mm. Right? Now I have to worry because I've never personally experienced a cop doing this, but I saw it on TV. Mm. I heard it on the internet. Mm. So therefore, now when the cop comes, I got to put my hands up. I got to make sure that I don't go fast for my wallet. Mm. That's been handed to me. Mm. As a believer, I don't operate in that. Mm. I can talk to him with respect. And, and anything that is going to happen, let me tell you something, child of God, it was going to happen with or without you. That's who we serve, mm. the God who controls both evil and good. No, mm. Nothing gets by him. <laughs> It's all in his hands. And so his narrative of, of, of racism is, is, is not like everybody else would have been because he, here it is, you're in business today, multi-million dollar business, generations later off of the seed mm -hmm. of somebody in a different color skin. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 So the idea of allies, if you will, and going back to what you said about the fear being instilled, mm -hmm. It's also power instilled in others. So wow. we get the fear, they get the power. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we got to switch that. Again. Say that again. Yeah, yeah, I got, we yeah. get the fear, they get the power. It's a trade. Wow. Yeah. So we need to switch that. It's like I said It's a broken before. system anyway. I think we need a new, instead of switch it, play their game, it, it needs to be eliminated and started over. It's an understanding of what's happening to you versus what's happening for you. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come and and, and when, you, when you see it that way, like, it, it's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice to believe that everything that's happening to me is right. happening for me because the Bible tells me that he always causes that's me to right. triumph. That's right. And that it's not over until I win. And that all things, not some things, not sometimes, not some of the things, not some of the time, are working for my good according to his riches and that's not exactly mine. Right. You know, we can, we can talk about this for hours, and we've been talking about this going on for, you know, a while. But I want, I want to end on a love note about us. What is, in one sentence, sentence, you guys, not a paragraph. Why are you looking at, why are you looking at me when I'm you just saying, you know, I'm looking at, at all y'all. Look dead at me when you said that. You know, sentence. I want you to take some time. I want you to think about what do you love 
about the black community? What do you love when you think about us? What makes you smile? What makes you happy? What encourages you? What, what, what gives you that joy, that, that excitement about us as a community? No, I no, love no, no, no. Before you go, go can, I, can I go last? Because I can't do it in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. It's flavor. Mm. I'm a New Orleans girl. Mm. And Katrina put us all over the world, like PJ Morton said. Mm -hmm. And we sprinkled that flavor from sea to shining sea. Mm. And in every place in our culture, American history, red or yellow, black or white, you see the influence of the enslaved African people. And no greater time did I see that than how we were spread after Katrina and how we saw our culture end up in different cities around the world. Mm. So for me, what I love about the Black community is its flavor mm. and how it has fed this entire world. Mm -hmm. Wesley? I love uh, how we stand together and pick up each other when, you know, we're, we're down. Yeah. And uh, standing together as a unit, whether it's fighting for Black Lives Matter, regardless of, you know, the Black people that may be a part of the movement, they're still Black. Mm -hmm. They still want to be heard, and they f feel as if we're fighting for something, which we are. Intentions are in the right place. And you ask yourself, is that good enough? Me personally, that's something that, you know, that, that person, you know, has to deal with. But us standing together as a unit and also picking each other up, you know, uh, when, when, when you're down, I think about it as in the people I have in my circle. I'm, I'm big about, you know, surrounding myself with, um, you know, Black people who uplift me, who push me, who motivates me, who who gives me that that burst of energy when I'm having a bad day, and I got some great friends who do that. So, you know, saying that to say, just just continue to uplift, you know, one another. Love it. Who's next? Oh, you smiling? I'm gonna keep it to the one sentence. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to use that. None of them. None of them. Yeah. One sentence. I was going to use that. And here nah. you go. Nah. One sentence. I love how we can make something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. Hey. One sentence. Can you do one sentence? <laughs> LaDonna, can you do one? Uh, Come maybe. on. Maybe. Okay. Well, I was going to say, like, I, it's hard to pick. I love everything about Black culture. I love, you know, just the, the variance in our experiences. I love, like, our culture. I love that we can, you know, see a Black person walk down the street and do that little head nod. You know what that means. <laughs> you know, I just, I love our shared experiences. I'm, I know I'm going on. I love HBCUs. I've graduated from two. I went to Spelman for undergrad and Tennessee State University for my master's. So it's just, like, those shared experiences are something that you can't even explain. You just have to be there to witness it and feel it. Ladies? I love, I just love black people. I think, <laughs> I think black people are amazing. Um, everything that you guys said, creating something out of nothing, being able to connect. I think that's, that's probably my favorite thing about black people. And like I said, being on an HBCU campus is so diverse. We come from all different places and we have our problems within the community, but everybody has their problems. And it's like, my little brother, I'm going to talk about him. I'm going I'm to mess with my little brother. But if anybody else mess with my little brother, it's on site. Mm. It's on site. <laughs> and I think it's the same for a black community. We have our problems, but and we have our differences. But at the end of the day, we have each other's back. And we're going to love each other. And we're going to connect. And when you see a black person in public, you're in an all-white space or wherever you're at, it's like, and you know what that means. So you can get, you can give each other the look, and y'all know what that means. You know exactly what you're thinking. You the last one, preacher. You got 30 seconds. That's close. Because <laughs> you can't do a sentence, but I'll give you 30 seconds. So the word love 
means value, literally. Um, anything you value, you cherish. Anything you value, you hide, right? If it's a value, you don't just leave it out in the open and you hide it because things of value get stolen. Mm. So when we say love, we're really saying value. And what I value about us is that we're so valuable, mm. but we just don't know it. The mm. world knows it. They hide, they hide our history, value. They steal our identity, value. Mm. Everything that makes us valuable are the things that we look down. Oppression, you don't oppress a people who are not a people. Mm. Mm. Why would you? <laughs> Oppression is because there's a value there and you don't want them to know they have value. And so what I love about us, what I value about us is just how valuable we are. But the day will come where our eyes will be open and we'll understand who we are. But until that time, the world knows it, the world sees it, and the world will continue to profit off of it and continue to, you know, make money off of it and be successful off of it. We built the world. Mm. Built it. Mm. Do your homework, do your history. Valuable. Mm. We are just ignorant as to who we are. That's why you're the pastor. I was no, going to say, no, where's the church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, I need pastor. to know where your church is because yeah. I already my, know your name my. now, like you said. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you all for no, thank uh, you, man. doing uh, this is my second Black History panel. Uh, definitely not my last. Y'all have to share with us your thoughts. And I thank each and every single one of you for taking out of your time to come and just share your thoughts, share your opinions, share your wisdom, and share your experiences, you know? And so thank you so much. And to those of you all watching, um, thank you. Thank you for spending this, this week with us, listening to our thoughts, uh, listening to our hearts. Uh, share this. Um, it's on both YouTube and the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. So make sure to subscribe on YouTube and subscribe and download and share um, on the podcast. And I'm going to tag all their information, their Instagrams, clubhouses, YouTubes, Twitter. We're going to put that in the show description. And I just here's the key thing I want to leave you all with. Love everyone. At the end of the day, love everyone, no matter of their skin color. And I didn't talk at all because I'm just the host. But I would definitely agree with Weston that I have some of the greatest blessings have come from white people. Some of my biggest burdens have come from black people. But then I've had some bad things with white people uh, as well. And so... One thing I've learned is to love all just as much as I love you. It's your boy A.O. I'm going to see you. Y'all already know. On the next show, peace out.